new toy. This is called a Zen drum. And I'm using it for all kinds of reasons, lots of uh, recording reasons, working in the studio, being able to program all my own drums with this fun little machine. But this week's wrap-up, and it is this week's wrap-up, July 10th, 2015, uh, what happened this week? Released Step 12 in the Melisma course. And Step 12 is about extending your melismas, being able to make them longer, come up with more notes. And the way that you do that is you start incorporating more rhythms in it. So I put together a really nice little lesson uh, for Step 12 that actually has to do with the Zen drum. So you, you got to be able to tune into the lesson to see what that's all about. But basically, I laid out a sheet of various different rhythms utilizing the major and minor pentatonic scale patterns, as you've been studying already if you're involved in the Melisma course, and starting to show you how to take these extended rhythms. And I put together a nice uh, page of rhythms using more than just the triplets and the dotted 8th to 16th note figures, but using 16th note figures in combinations of those triplets, dotted eighth to sixteenth note figures, and uh, pure sixteenth note patterns. And uh, putting them all together, it's kind of fun. And it actually took me a while, because uh, this is a new toy. It took me a little bit to figure out how to make that happen. Anyway, if you're, happening, if you're into the Melisma course, step 12 is about extending it. And uh, if you wonder how I did all those drum parts, I did them with my little Zen drum. And through the magic of video, my Zendrum is gone. Musical tip of the week. Well, I've been talking about consonant and vowel sounds, and I'll talk more about those. And there's lots of ways to use them and lots of things that you need to understand to help you improve your voice. But I'm going to give you a fun little tip, a couple of tips here, about pronunciation and that tongue thing. And when you're working with different vowel sounds, and the vowel sounds are inside the words, of course, when you start to vocalize off these different vowels, you may notice that some are easier to perform than others. Well, one of the things that tends to break is an ah vowel sound. If you try to take a, a pure ah vowel sound all the way up through your registers, if you actually understand how to move through your registers, I talk about that a lot, if you know how to take your voice from one place to another, you may notice that the ah vowel sounds a lot harder to do. And the reason why is because it's the widest, most open vowel sound. And that's cool when it comes to making a nice big sound, and old school teaching vocalizes everybody on an ah vowel sound. But you know what? If you try to take that ah vowel sound up too high, with too much of an open throat power, you may have a problem actually staying connected up into the higher notes. So here is the musical tip of the week. The musical tip of the week is don't use an ah, ah, use an uh, uh, won't break as easy as ah. Uh. No, you see, I still held it, but if I start taking it up higher, ah, uh, but if I go ah, uh, ah. Uh, you have a tendency to do that. That tendency happens because everything splatters because the ah is so wide it changes the shape in the throat. It's way easier to use the shape uh. uh I pulled that in the head voice that time. That's your musical tip of the week. Simple as that. Well, I'm going to give you one more. It's just so we have a little more time here. Another tip about sounds and how they work is how you handle diphthongs. Now, diphthongs are single syllable words with double vowels inside of them. And quite often, the classical approach is always to sing on the first vowel and end quickly on the second vowel. Sometimes you don't even understand that there's two sounds even inside of a diphthong. You think it's a single syllable word that has one sound. So for example, the, the, the word song. I'm singing songs. Well, you said, oh, if I would sing that word, that wouldn't be too difficult. But really, two different things happen with that word. Song. 
That O-N-G at the end causes the tongue to come up and touch the back of your soft palate. Song. And so are you going to sustain on the song? Or are you going to sustain on the song? Well, what do you think? Of course, in this case, it would be would make a lot of sense to sustain on the first of the two vowels. So song is spelled S-O-N-G, but not in my studio. It's spelled S-A-H, sustain. Song, and you bring that O-N-G in. Now, since we were just talking about words that have an ah vowel sound in, in them as they go higher, here's an example. So we've got two things going on. We've got the problem of a diphthong with the pronunciation of this word. And simultaneously, if this was something that was to be brought up higher, it might be a little harder for you to pull it up higher if you go into the ah. So, so, and if you have a word like this as it's going up higher in your range, it may be the reason why you can't make it through your break. Lots of times people notice that, hey, first verse I had no sweat singing through th this melody line, and the second verse the melody line didn't change, it didn't go any higher, yet it's just a bear for me. It's got to be the words, and usually it runs into a problem, something similar to what I'm showing you here. So if I want to go, song, or shall I go, song. Uh -huh. If I take that UH, that uh sound as I'm pulling it up higher, way easier on my throat, way easier to stay connected and not break. So I'm giving you two tips. When you have diphthongs, listen to the sound and the vowel that's inside of it. Understand and identify it as two sounds. Identify what those two sounds are. If you're working with an, uh, an ah vowel sound and you're trying to go higher in your range, don't think of it as an AH, think of it as a UH. Two good musical tips of the week. If you know already about how to keep your voice connected, those are good tips. Now, if you don't know how to keep your voice connected, then you need to come over to totallyvocals.com, right? And get involved in all of the courses that take you from step one all the way through all of these types of things, explaining to you and teaching you and developing your voice. You can sing from the lower part of your voice up to the highest parts of your voice and back down again smoothly and freely with no, no matter what vowel sound you're working with. So totallyvocals.com. We've got courses beginning, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, course that develops vibrato for you, ear training courses, Courses that teach melismas, and again, melismas are multiple notes on single vowels put inside words. It's the types of things that R&B singers do, jazz singers, rock singers, country singers, and musical theater singers are all of those different types of singers depending upon the musical that's being involved at the time. So come on over, totallyvocals.com. See everybody next week.